Hi, it's Alan from Crashdesk Security. In this video, I will tell you more about open source security, the main risks and vulnerabilities associated with OSS, and how to prevent them. So let's get started. Open source software is everywhere. Upward 95% of all commercial databases contain at least one OSS component. OSS is often free, saving developers time and effort to create their components or capabilities from scratch. However, using OSS potentially also carries serious risks. As many as 75% of open source code bases have been found to contain vulnerabilities, with about 50% containing severe vulnerabilities. These are not due to the open source model itself or the quality of the code, but due to a combination of factors that can seriously harm your data and systems. Open source vulnerabilities and risks arise for several reasons. In essence, vulnerabilities are due to weak code that opens the door for exploits and attacks. However, these are further compounded by factors associated with OSS, which must be kept in mind. The following are the main reasons for open source security risks. Publicity of vulnerabilities. Vulnerabilities to open source software are announced publicly by organizations such as the National Vulnerability Database and the Open Web Application Security Project, as well as by developers and contributors to the open source community. While there are advanced notices for community members before vulnerabilities are made public, this doesn't guarantee that vulnerabilities won't be exploited, nor does it mean that everyone will implement patches and fixes on time. This inconsistency creates openings in security and leaves vulnerable components open to attacks. Legal issues and risks. While the legal issues around using open source code are not strictly speaking security vulnerabilities, they create additional difficulty around using such software. Open source is often considered entirely free and open, but this needs to be qualified. To legally use such components, you must comply with all the license conditions they are under. There are currently over 200 different types of open source licenses, many of which cannot be used together. As the number of licenses you use increases, it becomes harder to avoid conflicts and remain compliant. In addition to these compliance requirements, there are also possible issues around intellectual property infringement that can come up. This is because there is no strict commercial regulation or control over them, allowing for proprietary code to end up in your software. You must perform extensive due diligence when using OSS to avoid legal action. No warranty and security guarantees. With open source software, there may be no verifications, support, warranty, or security guarantees. Open source development is frequently a volunteer effort, and projects may be shut down or abandoned when developers can't keep up. This also means that there may or may not have been proper testing during the development process. Community members often provide some testing and support, but cannot be relied upon entirely to have spotted every possible issue. Of course, when the community does find vulnerabilities, it works toward fixing these. However, this may take more time than usual, exposing software users. Operational risks. Tracking down the latest patch or fix can sometimes be a complicated process. Regular maintenance and checking that all open source components are patched with the latest version is necessary. This requires companies to keep inventories and automate the process of keeping track to avoid any unplugged holes in the system. A further operational risk is that of having to fix vulnerabilities in projects that have been abandoned and have no community support anymore. Here, companies must set aside manpower and resources to track such projects and ensure they are properly managed and secured. Development insufficiencies. Sometimes, despite all the bright minds participating in the open source ecosystem, certain development malpractices and insufficiencies can still appear. Bad practices, such as copy-pasting code, can open up vulnerabilities and make them hard to track. For one, when copy-pasting, any vulnerability already presented in the code will also be transferred to your project. And once a code snippet becomes part of your database, it cannot be tracked and updated, opening the door to future vulnerabilities. Moreover, issues with the code can also arise due to faulty transfers, such as via email instead of a repository. Such unsafe handling allows the code to be manipulated before it reaches its recipient. Following are some of the open source security measures and practices you can implement to reduce the risks of using such software. Emphasize security first, create and enforce a security policy, specifying the permissible risk level in using open source libraries and components. Maintain an inventory of all open source software in use and track all OSS licenses, component history, vulnerabilities, and updates. 
Train your staff. Provide non-security staff with training and introduce greater cooperation between development and security teams to harden your security stance. Make sure developers understand security issues and know how to identify and mitigate them. Automate, monitor and test. Use an automated security tool to monitor for vulnerabilities through logs, audits, incident alerts, etc. Test all open source software before implementation and throughout its whole life cycle. Implement security checks through static analysis that scans and tracks code. Perform manual code review where needed. Try Crash Test Security today to discover how it integrates into your development stack for efficient, automated vulnerability scanning. The trial is free. Also, subscribe to the Crash Test Security channel to get more information about the most significant web security threats, their prevention, and how to use the Crash Test Security suite. Thank you for watching and see you in our next video.